So Dr. McLaughlin, let's talk about the new vaccine. When do you think it's gonna be available here in Alaska and what benefit do you think it will provide? Great, well, first of all, thanks so much for um, having me on the show today, I really appreciate it. Uh, the vaccines will be available next week. So the Pfizer vaccine will be available for all ages next week. And then the Moderna vaccine will be available for everyone ages 12 and up next week. We don't yet know when the pediatric uh, dosage for the Moderna vaccine will be available, but we expect it'll be soon. Um, what I can say about the vaccine is it is uh, recommended now nationally for everyone ages six months and over. And so that's um, a new recommendation that has just come out uh, nationally. And we know that the vaccine effectiveness of the vaccine is typically highest during the, th the first three months after vaccination. And so depending on the age group and risk factors, it's usually uh, the last data that we have is anywhere from about mid 50 percentage range up to about mid 60 percentage range on average. So I'm told that some new numbers came out just within the past couple of days. What are the current COVID-19 trends that we're seeing here in Alaska? Mm. So first of all, let's just talk briefly about what's happening nationally. What we're seeing is a steep increase in COVID cases, although the absolute numbers are not as high as what we've seen during the peak of, for example, the Omicron wave that we saw last year. But we are seeing a steady increase in cases nationally, as well as hospitalizations and deaths. In Alaska, we've only seen a small increase in our cases and um, maybe just a little bit of an increase in our hospitalization. So we really haven't seen that upward trajectory yet in Alaska that's uh, occurring nationally. Well, there are some new variants out there. What sort of symptoms are we seeing from those new, uh, new variants of the virus? Great, yeah, thanks for that question. Lots of COVID variants uh, circulating right now nationally. There's no one variant that really is, has the strongest foothold. Uh, so we're seeing from CDC many, many different variants and they're all sub-lineages of Omicron. And so many people have already been infected with the Omicron variant. And so many of you probably already know what those common signs or symptoms are. We really haven't seen any increased virulence in this particular, in the particular strains that are circulating now, meaning that they don't appear to be more capable of causing severe disease. Um, so just the same symptoms that we've seen generally with uh, COVID over the years here. Um, but in terms of hospitalizations and deaths, our numbers are much lower than they were, you know, two years ago with the pandemic. Well, it's certainly good to hear. So some parts of the country have been returning to mask mandates recently. Do you foresee Alaska having to do that? No, I don't see, I don't foresee Alaska having to do that. Gotcha. All right. So COVID isn't the only health threat that we face this time of year. Flu season is almost here. What are you expecting for that? And what's the message you want to get out about some of the other uh, potential illnesses? Great. Thank you so much for that. You're right. Uh, influenza season is coming very soon. We really haven't seen much influenza activity yet nationally, but we know it's coming. Um, one of the things that's really fortunate is we are able to take a look at what's happened in the southern hemisphere during the 2023 uh, winter season in the, in the southern hemisphere and use that information to sort of predict what we can expect here in uh, the United States. And what we saw is um, the vaccine effectiveness for the seasonal flu vaccine in the sum summer hemisphere, sorry, the southern hemisphere was actually quite good this year. It was a little over 50% uh, for prevention of influenza associated hospitalizations. And so that's really good for the flu vaccine. So um, again, I really highly recommend everyone ages six months and over to get their flu vaccine every year. I get it every year. Uh, typically I will get it anywhere from sort of late September or all the way through any you know, maybe mid to late October, depending on what's happening nationally. If we're not seeing a lot of influenza activity in September, then I typically wait a little bit. I'll go in October, uh, sort of mid-October or even later October, October, depending on 
um, what's happening nationally. Um, some people go in for their regular checkups in September, and um, if, if that's the case, then you may as well go ahead and get the flu vaccine uh, during that time. And RSV is also out there as well, right? Yes, yeah, so uh, another respiratory pathogen that is circulating is uh, respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV. We are already seeing increased RSV activity in the southeastern part of the United States, and it's starting to make its way westward uh, and northward. Um, Fortunately, this year, for the first time ever, we have a number of prevention tools for RSV that we haven't had in the past. First of all, for infants, uh, the, there's a new recommendation for a monoclonal antibody called nircivimab, and that's for all infants um, less than eight months of age. And the, vac the, the effectiveness of that monoclonal antibody at preventing hospitalization is very high, upwards of 80 plus percent. RSV is the leading cause of uh, hospitalization in this age group uh, nationally. And so this will be a really helpful tool to help prevent RSV, uh, not only infection, but hospitalizations and deaths nationally. There's also an RSV vaccine that's available for adults aged 60 and over. And this is currently available uh, at pharmacies across the state. And so really encourage folks to talk to their healthcare provider about that vaccine. Um, there will also be a vaccine available for uh, during pregnancy. Actually, it's during the latter end of the third trimester of pregnancy. So during uh, weeks 32 through 36 of gestation. And that vaccine will help protect the developing fetus. And then once, that, uh, once the baby is born, then uh, that baby will have some immune protection for the first six months of life due to that vaccine. So lots of really exciting things on the RSV prevention front. All right, back to the new COVID vaccine for a moment. What's your advice about who should get it? And if you've had COVID before, do you really need this new shot? Great question. So the current recommendation nationally is for the new COVID vaccine to be um, administered to anyone six months of age and older. And um, if you've had previous COVID infection, it really depends on when you were infected. If you were infected within the last three months, it's probably okay to go ahead and wait until at least three months have passed since your most recent infection to get that vaccine. Uh, you could wait a little bit longer if you want. Um, and again, just keeping in mind that the vaccine is most effective at preventing um, hospitalization and more severe cases, ICU stays and deaths during that first three months after administration. And then the vaccine effectiveness does wane over time. And so I like to uh, try and time these vaccines so that I'm maximally protected during peak season. Now, we know that for influenza and RSV, the peak season is right smack dab in the middle of the winter months. With COVID, it's, it, we've had these waves that have occurred with COVID. I'm sure everybody re recalls the various waves, and some of them have occurred right in the, the peak of the, the mid-winter months, and some of them haven't. But um, we're thinking that over time, this virus will likely start to follow more of a seasonal pattern like we see with influenza and RSV. So that's why the timing of this vaccine uh, is, you know, CDC is um, making it available nationally now, uh, just in anticipation that we will see uh, an increase in RS, or sorry, in COVID activity during the winter months. And we are already seeing that increase in, in COVID activity nationally, just not so much quite yet in Alaska. Dr. Joe McLaughlin, Alaska State Epidemiologist, thank you so much for your insight on this.